Hi boys, welcome to 3.21 league. Let's get straight to the point here. Um, I will be league starting as Toxic Green, Ballista, Pi, Pathfinder. Uh, why? There are four reasons. Okay, the first is that I have a very specific farming plan that works very very well with Toxic Green. Um, Toxic Green Pathfinder has very fast movement speed. Um, this is due to the new Adrenaline Mastery and Onslaught Key Notable, which I plan to take over here. So you have Onslaught if you've changed stuns recently and gain Adrenaline for 1 second when you have changed stuns. I plan to put um, maybe a Blood and Sand stuns on my left click so it will be triggered all the time, meaning I'll get uh, about 20% plus a 100% movement speed uptime basically almost all the time um, Toxic Rain also does chaos damage over time which is I, in my personal opinion is the best um, damage type for league starters it's easy to scale it, um, because it only needs gem levels and it can do most content very simply very easily right so the first reason, the main reason, was that Toxic Rain is very um, very suitable to what I plan to farm in this league. So here's my um, expected match, uh, my expected currency progression. First, I'll start on maps. I'll just end through, run through the campaign real quick. Uh, start on maps, and um, mapping is actually very easy on Toxic Rain. Even um, especially with totems, because what you do is you, you place a totem and you keep running. Uh, you have to trust that monsters behind you die. I played ballista builds many many leaks and I've learned to trust in this process. Once I hit the atlas, what I want to do first is to rush. Rush all the way up here and get the Kirek node. So this um, hopefully will be reached before the end of the day. So I get one additional Kirek mission. Mm. We all know that essences are very good money, especially at the start of the leaks. And it isn't get kept by low tier maps. So you'd be making consistent currency even as you're progressing through the Atlas. Also, why Kirek? Um, I really like playing with uh, the scouting reports. Um, they are very good. You can get rewards such as drop an entire stack of divination cards, which like things like Porcupine or Holy Chainmail will give you very easy access to sick slings, which can sell for like maybe a hundred chaos at the first day of the league. Uh, it also gives you unique map completions and regular endless progressions. So it's very good to just pass right through here since I'm going up here anyway. After getting all the essence nodes, I'll complete my final Atlas plan which is to go for essence and blights. So the way that blight works is that when you start a blight encounter, monsters will start spawning from the portals. This is where toxic rain is incredible. Um, the single target damage of Toxic Rain is amazing, so um, essences are not a problem. It is also very safe, so you probably will get quite high levels, maybe up to 93 safely. Um, for Blight, you just leave those Toxic Rain pots at the Blight portals, and you will just wreck everything that spawns off the portals. It's just a very comfortable playstyle. And um, another benefit is that um, many blight monsters have this proximity shield which your toxic rain will just bypass completely. Not only is the damage incredible to be farming maps, right? The the speed, the movement speed of Pathfinder is also nothing to be joked at. You could maybe clear a map in one minute maybe less 
especially with the new adrenaline and um, onslaught nodes. So what do I do from here? Um, my next plan is to go for the uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, the expedition nodes. Um, as everyone knows, uh, chaos damage over time builds are insane for farming expedition because you can ignore most remnant um, downsides. A, I really like to see rock in the map as early crafting with rock is very very good money. There are plenty of guides out there on how to get started with rock crafting currency generation. If there are people who really want to know how I could, I guess I could make a tutorial video. Anyway, um, Danik and Dujan are also a very welcome site as they give incredible currency at the start of the league. Which can help with early game crafting. One time I got a divine orb on the first reroll and my league start was just pretty much done. So, so to summarize this phase, I would rush the map Ignoring all the non spec mechanics like um, Breach, um, de Delve, and only do those mechanics that I've spec into, except maybe for um, the highest lockers. So, how would I run this map? I would go rush through, find possibly the uh, expedition, place my explosives, detonate them. And while they are detonating in the chain, I'll go do some other contents. I'll go find the essence, go start the blight or something. Then at the end, I'll run back to the expedition and clear the expedition and get out. Okay, so my maps, I would spec into essences, blight. Light, then expedition. At this point, I should be roughly at tier twelve, tier thirteen. So what's next for me? These should easily be at least 4 divines per hour from what I've um, done in several past leaks it's usually around 5 div divines per hour but I like to um, round down my expect expectations so with 4 div divines per hour you could really get jacked very quickly my next plan is when I reach about 12 divines per hour I would invest them into upgrading the build. So for Toxic Rain, the next big upgrade is the plus 3 bow, which gives me maybe about a 50% damage boost. I will replace my Quill Rain with, uh, with this new bow. Um, then maybe I'll farm another 4 Divines to go into my next phase of progression, which is what I do every league. It's to farm logbooks. These are insane money. The strategy for log logbooks are um, discussed in many other videos, but the strategy that I go with is I just run in. I try not to read the remnants too much because it's a waste of time. I just place down all the explosives at artifact chests and runic markers. And of course, if there's a boss, I'll do the boss. Then... I'll farm block books. With my build at 12 divines, I would easily be able to do lock books at um, item level 81 and above. This is um, where the breakpoint for most boss encounters will come out. What lock books will I do? Um, this depends. I usually prefer to do Danik, but that depends on the price. So for last league, the prices for um, then it was a little bit way too high as compared to Dujan so 
I did two gen instead and I, I made quite good profit of that too. Um, I'm expecting to average about seven, six or seven device per hour. And with this currency generation, my next goal is to get a uh, headhunter. A headhunter would usually cost about 60 or 70 divines um, maybe on day 4, day 5 so I could easily achieve all this with um, 10 hours of farming uh, I wouldn't say easily, maybe give or take, I'll take 12 hours so that's one day keep in mind that um, this whole process should be done within 3 days if you're fast and have no life which I plan to do okay so why a headhunter as a pathfinder I'm also a ranger which can easily transition into a dead eye and dead eyes have access to one of the most lucrative currency making strategies available to the game I will transition into a 5 way carry um, I'd probably need more money than simply owning just a headhunter but if I sold my plus 10 bow I could get a very I'm sorry, sorry my plus 3 bow I could get a very baseline 5 way carry character especially with this buff to bow characters this league I, I, I think the entry cost will be a lot lower to 5 ways um, 5 ways are typically around um, 10 divines per hour this is including the um, finding a party and uh, getting an aura bot to, to um, join the party at what point do I stop doing 5 ways? This is when I get a mid's blood um, I don't actually have to get a mid's blood because uh, my end goal would not require a mid's blood but I plan to farm enough currency to at least afford a mid's blood which should be about 200 divines and that would take me 2 days of doing lifeless 5 way carries which are very very boring but the currency is amazing right um, so this is basically my entire farming strategy from zero to hero if I find it boring there's always plan B uh, toxic ring characters have this have access to this other crazy farming method which are simulacrums Simulacrums, um, for some reason, are not very sought after in the recent leaks. Um, I'm not sure why, but simulacrums themselves cost very little currency and they make you so much currency. I think why people don't play simulacrums more is because they are very boring, but they are always uh, plan B. This could maybe be a uh, eight divines per hour, if you're lucky. If you're unlucky, you get five. But similar terms have always been very, very, very profitable. So it's a good plan B. Okay, on to my second reason. Okay, so for the second reason, I choose to play um. Toxic Rain Pathfinder It's because I really enjoy playing bow builds like uh, Lightning Arrow and Tornado Shot especially with this league being a, a bow league I, I, I think that this is my ideal endgame build Last league I had um, a tornado shot character with um, up to 200 million 
the damage per second as an omniscient tornado shot co convert character. Through my estimation, uh, with the new masteries and all the different nodes with the new items, uh, I estimate that tornado shot characters will get a 28% buff on the damage, which is absolutely ridiculous. Previously, with 200 million DPS, I was already clearing Ubers in seconds. And with this buff, I think they, they wouldn't even get to get to move. When you have this much damage, you don't really need to invest in defense. Um, every league, before I quit, um, my goal is usually to get at least 34, eh, 38 or 40 achievements. And I plan it to do with this endgame tornado shot character. Uh, there's also consideration for lightning arrow, as um, lightning arrow, vow lightning arrow has been newly introduced, and lightning arrow builds tend to have trouble with single target damage. And if vow lightning arrow, along with the new vengeance cascade node does single damage single target damage like a beast uh, I I might give it a shot the third reason is because of um, damage over time builds does very well I think in this leak mechanic um, it's very similar to ritual where where this alter thing spawns monsters on the ground and with toxic rain your Poison pots will just kill them as they spawn, which means you're very safe. Especially with totems. Um, you're just running around all the time and your totems will do all the killing. Traditionally, leak contents in naps tend to be very profitable. A, I'm not sure how much currency we could actually make with this leak mechanic, but um, there is actually a notable one of the notables that um, says you can sell this item to vendors for a divine orb then my strategy would revolve around just farming the item exp then selling the item for a free divine orb maybe i could split this split, uh, use a split beast for um, double the divine ops if the beast is cheap and and, uh, and it's confirmed to work like that The final reason why I chose to play a Toxic Rain Ballista is because I want to try the new Pathfinder rework. It's it's absolutely ludicrous. It's possibly the strongest ascendancy in the game right now. Just this one notable gives you three to four thousand life regeneration per second, which makes you kind of immortal unless you get one shot. But um, Postron's uh, toxic range build has um, multiple defensive layers uh, which prevents one shot such as uh, the progenesis flask and petrified petri fight blood this is one of the most insane leak starter that has come out in a long time and I'm extremely excited to try it so these are the reasons why I think toxic rain ballista is the best leak starter for me to farm the content I enjoy and I find profitable and easily transition and easily transition to my dream build without having to spend five or six hours clearing the campaign again. Let me know what league starter builds you all have in mind. Um and I guess I'll see you guys in Crucible League. Bye!